Hello. Thank you, guys. CES day four. Final day. <laughs> uh, so, Ryan, um, obviously, you directed that. Yeah. How did you get into filmmaking to begin with? Uh, yeah, so I started out in graphic design. That's kind of my background. Went to school for that. And um, I, I had a brief uh, period of time where I worked as a user interface designer at Apple, um, doing stuff on iPhone, Mac OS X, stuff like that. Um, so I was always really interested in like the, the technical side of design and visual media, um, but then kind of got more into filmmaking uh, from that because I was interested in making these designs move and making things kind of move a bit more, um, bit more dynamic, I guess. Um, one of the first projects I did was visuals for uh, Major Laser, which was a new Diplo uh, music project at the time and still is, uh, where he reached out on MySpace, which was still a thing when he reached out to me. Um, and yeah, I just really like this idea of filmmaking being kind of a, uh, uh, it's pulling a lot of disciplines together. It's engineering, it's technology, it's art, it's um, storytelling, all yeah, that together. Yeah, you definitely had that, that technology forward interest in, yeah, in creating. Yeah. Um, yeah. And with that, how mm -hmm. did you arrive at Thermal for, for the Route 94 music video? Uh, yeah, so the, the way that music video pitches work, for anyone that isn't aware, they, they basically, the label and the artist will come to you and they'll be like, this is the song we want can you come up with an idea? And maybe they have a loose idea, maybe they don't. In this case, they didn't have much of an idea, and it's obviously a dance song without a lot of lyrics, but it does talk about the idea of love and touch and, and intimacy and all that. Um, so I was interested in the idea of trying to show those ideas through a lens that we hadn't really seen much before, and I like the idea that you know, FLIR technology or thermal in general could kind of give a look of, of physical touch in ways that were not seen previously. Yeah. And at the time, did you know that the equipment was accessible when you when you pitched the idea, or no, not did you really. do some fact finding <laughs> before you you came up with it? Or? I, I had to do a little research. Um, a lot of times, these projects, you know, that it's a very quick period of time that you have right. to pitch. But um, but I looked online, you know, at some of the kind of latest technology as far as the resolution of the cameras from FLIR, and I was really amazed that there was a lot more detail than I remembered, you know, from growing up and, you know, watching Predator or something. Yeah. It was no longer, a, you know, a blurry image. It was something with a lot of, you know, detail and fidelity to it. Um, and, uh, and I reached out to you guys to see if you could rent them, and it turned out you could, and uh, <laughs> I kind of went that path. Cool. Well, let's, yeah. watch, let's watch more of the music video, and we'll, we'll talk a little bit more about it. <coughs> What I really like about the music video, so you know, I, I work for FLIR. We, I see many different use cases. A lot of them more literal, mm -hmm. you know, not uh, more practical, mm -hmm. right? Not right. art. Um, and and watching something like this, everyday thing, boy meets girl, all that. It really starts to take a surreal look by the end. Is that what you were looking for? Yeah, I mean, I, I just like this idea of something that kind of, um, yeah, just, just you, you kind of slowly get lulled into this look of this world, um, and it, maybe it starts out a bit more every day, but you, you are seeing a relatively, relatively simple story, like you said, a boy meets girl, but through this kind of unique viewpoint that you're not used to, and there's a lot of opportunities throughout that story to kind of kind of show the world in different ways. Um, but then again, this idea that kind of, as it goes through the image quality of it, maybe it's it's still kind of surreal, but it becomes something that you you kind of yeah lulled into this kind of uh, uh, acceptance of. You're like, this is the world I'm looking at now. Um, yeah. yeah. And <coughs> how did the artists respond to you wanting to use this type of technology in in the storytelling. I mean, they were, they were pretty into it from the start, the idea of this, this look and this approach. Um, you know, again, in music videos, it's kind of, you know, a big part of them is there's so, so much content out there. It's, it's really, I think, good for the labels and the artists to kind of find something that has a, a unique look and way to kind of stand out um, among other content out there. And I think that they really responded to that part of this. Yeah, um, it was very different at the time. Yeah, right? it's very, like, very different. I don't for think sure. anyone had done one yeah. of these back then. Yeah, it was school, one yeah. of the first, I think. Yeah, um, yeah, for sure. But um, <clears throat> but so they responded to that. You know, there was there was one request where they wanted it to start out with like a visible light shot, which we did for their edit. But for the director's edit, I went full full clear yeah. the whole way. And now, um, you know, you uh, you didn't have that much time with the camera. Yeah. I, I remember you telling me that. Like, how long did it take you to kind of know what was going to work, what wasn't, and what what did you find?
cool. Obviously, a little handprint. Yeah, yeah. S- stuff like this. I mean, you, you learn a lot as you go, you know, how to use it. Um, how, how many days did you have before? I think we had for like three or four for the whole camera, but we get like two days ahead of time to kind of accessorize it and build it out. That's so crazy. Yeah, yeah, yeah not, not much time. <laughs> so in a, um, in, a, in a normal shoot or any shoot, you kind of take the camera to a rental house and you'll kind of build out gear for it, monitors, uh, follow focuses, stabilization, all sorts of things. But this particular project, we had to take this this camera and kind of find how to learn or how to use a FLIR camera with kind of more cinema friendly tools, I guess. Right. Um, so, you know, that period was both figuring out how to physically work with this camera, but then also how to, you know, how, what it can do differently. So like people have hot coffees and we're aiming right. at that and then we're friction, s- seeing the yeah. friction. Yeah. And seeing kind Cold of how stuff, things work. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. yeah. So it was yeah. kind of like, and in a, in a camera rental house, something like that is pretty exciting, too. So the people are coming <laughs> up and like, they're what like, yeah, what is, what is this thing? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Where'd you get it? Yeah, yeah. Um, and then casting must have been a challenge, too, because not yeah. everyone looks good in thermal. How did you deal with that without <coughs> having the camera for a long time? So, yeah, the casting. So we didn't have, you know, we didn't have the camera when we did casting. So we ended up renting uh, one of the small contractor point-and-shoot ones from uh, Home, Home Depot. Depot yeah. Yeah. Yep. And uh, using that just to take stills of people and little test clips. Um, and uh, and that was interesting because yeah the the normal way someone looks it, they can be very photogenic and nice looking and and attractive so but then you look at them through really flare. weird heat pattern exactly <laughs> then you see the, the the skull coming out and all that um, yeah were yeah. the you know were the actors uh, you know obviously actors really concerned about their looks mm-hmm. were they worried about how they looked in thermal or a, a little bit yeah they were like curious to see the monitor and you know it's very very much like a new way to see yourself sure. so it's yeah. um you know it, it's it's a bit jarring at first for them but then they'd be like oh that's really cool and then they'd touch their face and see right, like the cold right. fingers um, How about for continuity? Was there any continuity issues with the, the, with, the, the, with the moving, with people sweating, that kind of stuff? Uh, there, there was a little bit like where when they when they start making out in the video, you can see that they're like, I think they get a little nervous and, and maybe a little turned on. I don't sure, know. Yeah, but you yeah. see the capillaries yeah. kind of like their, their skin texture gets a little more kind of marbled, right. which yeah. I think is really cool. So I wasn't worried about Fits that. the story. Yeah, right. exactly. Yeah. Um, but in terms of continuity, you do have some challenges where, you know, basics like the color of someone's hair isn't going to come through. Um, so... We kind of had to cast it in a way where the the male lead and the female lead kind of had pretty you know pretty bold recognizable looks that still held yeah. true in FLIR or visible light because you you don't have a lot of the benefits of you know again hair color or uh, wardrobe or you know a lot of these things are just kind of uh, well, I guess some of the wardrobe comes across but yeah. colors and stuff and like lose. the mesh stuff to right really the mesh stuff yeah. helps a yeah. lot yeah. Um, and there's a visual effect that you yeah. uh, I had no idea until you told me. Yeah. Tell us a little bit about, about that. So, so yeah, this is um, I- in the music video world that normally you have very little money and very little time. So you have to kind of find uh, clever solutions to, to some of those problems. Uh, in this project, I think we had maybe 10 or 12 extras. Um, but I wanted a shot to kind of establish like this is a big party. Um, so this is actually a shot from a balcony where we moved the same group of 10 to 12 people around maybe eight times and then used the fact that the FLIR was exposing everything that wasn't people as just jet black to make a chroma key or effectively a, a green screen or a black screen of that and then composite those same people over and over. Um, so it allowed us to kind of very quickly do this, uh, which would have been pretty challenging in in uh, you know normal shot if it wasn't a green floor or something like that, of course. Uh, without a lot of rotoscoping and kind of manual manual labor. Um, we also benefited, obviously, from the fact that, again, I mentioned, like, for the casting, there's an anonymous quality sometimes, but this was actually really helpful here because, you know, you have the same person probably eight different times in here, but it's really hard to recognize them because of the kind of anonymous quality of, um, of what the... Uh, uh, the human body looks like. That's very clear. clever. Yeah, I mean, yeah. it's just amazing that you did it in, in the time that yeah. you had. So <laughs> this little. is the Steadicam rig that you had. Yeah. Um, tell us a little bit about that. Like some of Yeah, the so this, this was, we used a Steadicam on this project. Uh, for those of you that aren't familiar, a Steadicam is a way to balance a camera. Um, it was actually pioneered for the movie Rocky way back when. I didn't know that. Uh, yeah, that was the first time. Oh, yeah. wow. Um, for, the, for the stair sequence. Yeah, that was makes it. sense. Yeah. Um, but they, uh, we, it's basically an arm that comes off and then you hold the camera and the arm kind of balances the uh, motion of springs and stuff like that. Um, but we had to kind of bend the, th- this tool to the needs of the FLIR. So in this case, uh, the power was uh, only fed through, um, through basically wall power. So we had to put the power adapter on, uh, I'm sorry, the uh, power supply on top and routed a orange uh, extension cable behind it while we operated the camera. So the Steadicam operator had always someone behind him with the power cable. 
Um, the blue gear here is what's called a follow focus, which allows the person at the bottom right, that little hand on the dial, to remotely focus the lens. And we had to find some pretty custom sizes for the gears there because the, uh, the sizes of the, of the FLIR lenses were a bit different from the norms of cinema cameras. Um, but at the end of the day, you know, every shoot, you know, even with a normal camera, involves you know, a level of, of, of tinkering and figuring out the physicality of how you're going to make it all work. Yeah. And this is how we had to do it here. Yeah. yeah. No, it, it obviously worked really yeah, well. Yeah. Um, w did you record to the laptop or did you record via the video out? How did you get that? So, so we recorded from SDI out into this little monitor thing here on the side, which is a, uh, uh, a solid state recorder. I think a Atmos shotgun or Shogun or something, then, yep, yeah, yep. Uh, and it basically records ProRes video uh, gotcha. from the SDI out. And you didn't, you, did you do any color correcting, or is that right out the camera? No, I just, I really wanted to kind of keep it just raw. You know, I think we might have done a little, little hint of contrast or something like that, but, but really just wanted it to look very true to, to how it shot. It looks great. Yeah, yeah. thanks. Yeah. So now you haven't stopped using thermal in your work. Yeah. You recently used it in an Adidas campaign. Yeah. So let's check that out. So why why did you want to use thermal in this in this particular um, piece? So so this one it's obviously quite quite different. You know, it's still dance music heavy, but yeah. it's um uh in the kind of streetwear and, and fashion worlds, there's a lot of commercials that have kind of this idea of, you know, multiple uh multiple types of video kind of rolled together, kind of mixed media approach. Um and you know, there's the go to norms of kind of VHS and film and, and maybe, you know, digital or something, but I like this idea of trying to roll in a different look. Um, and to me, this look of FLIR and the black and white uh, kind of grayscale approach to it made a lot of sense because the idea to this campaign was this uh, the sense that like the the clothes were actually delivered where you would like call a number and it was almost like a drug delivery service and then these cyclists would come to your house and actually deliver this particular clothing to you um, through that that method. Yeah. And I like this idea that 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 uh, that particular look of thermal has this kind of sense of like a you know, surveillance look or kind of a clandestine operation or something like that. Yeah. Um, and just add to that. Yeah. yeah, exactly. Tries to add that. Now, uh, we talked about, you know, artists and if they wanted to use thermal. Mm -hmm. uh, how did, how, was, what was the brand's uh, reception when you told them you wanted to use thermal? So a lot of times they, they respond to it, you know, excited at first, but then they're like, wait, this means another camera. Like, <laughs> do we really need to do it? Can we yeah. just do an, do we have the know, budget for it? Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Can we just do an effect or something like that? Um, but I'm really, you know, after using thermal successfully on the first, first video, I really like the idea of kind of continuing that and not trying to fake it yeah. and just going with the actual look. Um, well, it's very different. When yeah, you yeah, it. You totally. can tell. Yeah, you yeah know, immediately. Once you know. You know. Once, once you, you know, know, you, you know. Yeah. And, then, and then you're like, yeah, it's so, it's, it's so accessible. It's at your fingertips. It's hard to go back after that. Yeah. And then there's all these things that you, you, you know, again, like the, the presence of the heat of the hand, you can't get that way. Right, um, right. I think we had some shots that didn't make it into the edit where the, uh, the bikers like slam on the brakes and oh, you see the tire yep. the friction and cool. stuff. Yeah. So just things like that that you couldn't do otherwise. When you watch movies and they fake it, or yeah. do, you, do you? Oh, definitely. Yeah, yeah, like, yeah. Uh, yeah, come yeah, on, guys. Yeah, yeah. Try harder. Yeah. Be authentic. Yeah, use the real deal. <laughs> <laughs> Um, and then this is the rig that you used. So instead of the the SC8300, which you used on the music video, yep. you used the T1K. Yeah, yeah, exactly. And the T1K, you know, it was, it was a little more mobile, a little easier to use in terms of, you know, battery, um, onboard batteries and stuff. So production-wise, a little easier to work with. But um, And that was with the red, right? Correct, with, yeah. the, red, with the red on the bottom in this particular case. Um, we, we, my director of photography, uh, Christian Zuniga, and I, we basically... Uh, like this idea of kind of putting both cameras on top of each other with the lenses kind of offset um, so that we could basically capture both thermal and visible simultaneously. Yeah. Um, which would allow us to basically shoot a shot, get two shots in one, and then in the edit, be able to toggle from one to the other and kind of get 
uh, either look of footage that we wanted. Yeah. And yeah. the resolution of the red was 6K? 6K, yeah. And, and they, then the T1K is 1024 by 768. Correct, yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, so we basically from that, we, we again, because the lenses aren't exactly perfect, we framed a little wide so we could reposition them in post to, to add up, um, you know, more or less, not pixel perfect, but yeah. in, in the same ballpark. Well, I mean, I find that the images do scale up, yeah. but when you're, when you're just looking at specs, yeah. people, people are always like, uh, you yeah, don't totally. have 4K thermal, but... Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. But People you, are used you really to don't seeing need it. it. Yeah. You don't really need that. I yeah. mean, once you have a look like that, that's not you know, it's it's more bold. It's, it's, it's almost graphic yeah. in a sense. It, yeah. it scales really well. Right. Yeah. Cool. Yeah. Um, and then this isn't the only one. You had this piece too. Let's check it out. Yeah. So yep. obviously, a lot more literal mm -hmm. use uh, versus the surveillance. You're trying yeah. to capture warmth and insulation, that sort of thing. With that yeah, light. trying to really. I mean, again, this product is you know it's a it's a down jacket. So to me, it felt like a layup where it's like, all right, let's show physically the idea of heat and how yeah. insulating this jacket is, um, and pitched it to the client that way. And and also like the palette obviously is different from the other two. It's not the grayscale because again, I felt that had like a more surveillance look. This feels very much like. To me, like physically hot and cold, the blue of the the colder world, the the kind of orangish red of the the hot stuff, um, and uh, yeah, I just wanted to kind of show that idea. Um, is that real snow? Uh, some the background snow is real snow, but the close up snow on the jacket is actually uh, we had to take a cheese grater and shave ice cubes to get the cold snow because normally you'd use fake snow or you'd use uh, instant mashed potato flakes and those would look fine on a visible light camera but in FLIR they wouldn't look cold you would, enough. You would so know that it's not you real know snow. Yeah, yeah, like, yeah. Why is that snow warm? Yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah. So we had to use cold snow. Cool. Yeah. So 300 million views, Route 94. Yep. You know, you, you recently got a VMA a couple years ago. Yep, yep. What's next? Um, so I'm still working on a lot of commercials and music video stuff like this. Uh, in my free time I'm trying to develop a feature film about deep fakes and fake video and the whole uh, erosion of trust and, and truth that might uh, happen because of that stuff. Cool. Yeah. Well, I look forward to seeing how you find new ways to use FLIR. Same here. Yeah, it's going to be fun. <laughs> cool. All right, Jake. Let's give away some products, huh? Oh, hello. hello well, a there. big round of applause to these two gentlemen, especially Ryan Stack. Thank you. He's an incredible... I would highly recommend Googling him after this, watching more of his stuff. Watch the whole Thank music you. video. That's not the whole music video. Some